time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. We have, really have an exciting show for you today. Uh, but before I get to that, I want to tell you a little story. Now, uh, as you know, I live in Olympia, Washington, and we have dollar stores here. And when we go uh, to a dollar store, everything is actually a dollar, unlike when I go across country and it'll say Dollar General, and then when I get there, the prices are different. And so occasionally I stop by the dollar store to buy something. And you know, when we get there, we go there with something in mind. And before you know it, you have three or four different bags full of things. And then when you get home, uh, you're trying to figure out, now what did I buy and what do I ever need this for? And uh, doing one of those trips to the dollar store, I bought these two little devices. They, uh, they bought so big and they look like little rockets. And what they're there for is to, they make an electronic sound so animals can hear you coming with your car. And they just have a little adhesive and you tap it right on there. And it's not, um, uh, people don't hear it or anything like that. And I thought, well, that's really stupid. What did I buy that for? So, but I had already bought it and so I attached it to the copper. So today, when I came to the studio, um, right around the corner, there was these two beautiful animals. And um, according to the instructions, it says that it puts out a frequency that alerts animals, especially deer, and instead of running or jumping, they just slow down and they will look around and see where the sound is coming from and then at a very easy pace, just cross the street. And believe it or not, that actually happened. And so I was able to enjoy the two deers and, all, and we stopped all the traffic and I was so well impressed with that. Now, what does the dollar store have to do with today's show? Well, actually nothing, but I wanted to tell it to you anyway. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, the other thing that you get at the dollar store, um, for one dollar is knives and forks and spoons. And you are going to hear a lot about PK today that means psychokinesis, and uh, because everybody's going to be talking about it, I thought I'd take this time and kind of teach you how to bend spoons so you know what we are talking about um, um, on these clips that I brought from all the friends. And this is a brand new pack here, and they're only a dollar, so if your children, so, so if, you, if, you're, if your children, um, end up with some of these. They don't have to bend. Um, it's going to be a little noisy here because I'm going to open this. Here we go. So, and then here, I'm, I'm just going to show you how to do this. And they, they fairly good strength here. And so what happens is, what they taught us is that um, Universe, if you ask, will make everything possible for you. And so, in order for universe to understand what you mean, you, you have to do a, um, you would have to uh, let your signature be known, which is your voice. And in the beginning, what you do is you take your, your objects, which would be a knife or a spoon or anything like that, and then you just rub it right here. Um, here we go, give a close up of this. You rub it right here and then you very loudly say, bend, bend. Oh, it's bending already. <laughs> bend. And by doing that, you let your voice be known and you change the texture of the, uh, of the metal. And then you just give it a little help and then you can bend it, you see. And then you just forget about it and you just keep rubbing it. and. Uh, when you get really good at it, you don't even have to um, talk to it anymore. And it's a wonderful thing to empower children so they can feel like they can be on the top of the world and do just about anything. So you see, now I'm at the point now where I don't have to talk anymore, but you can make animals out of it and everything. And so here you go. This is a little harder here. And this is called psychokinesis, meaning that at will with your mind, you change textures of things and then you can go right ahead and do all these things and here you go. That's what it's going to look like. And 
So what I think I want to do is, now that you know what that is, and we're going to be talking about that, I'm going to introduce you to a man named Doug. Um, we have lots of clips for you today. And we're going to put that here. And through the show, I'll just keep bending uh, spoons here. Actually, they are, they are forks. So during the trip I took this summer, um, like I told you, this would be the second show in a series on, um, on people that know how to do remote viewing. And so Danielle, uh, Danielle had set us up for this last week. And so today you're going to meet some people that actually went to the conference and they give you all the reasons why they have chosen to um, become remote viewers. So anytime we're ready, we can roll this clip. And this is a gentleman, his name is Doug, and he was on his way to take classes with um, uh, Major in the conference. And uh, he wanted to tell the friends how we met. That was kind of amazing. That really was. Uh, we were getting ready to leave to go to dinner from our hotel room, and uh, a friend of ours that was with us, traveling with us, um, he uh, happened to see, uh, I think, the signs on the side of your car mm -hmm. and walked over and was taking down the information and then bumped into you guys on the way out for dinner. And I understand you came a long ways, no? Yes, we came from uh, Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I actually live in Mechanicsville, which is a little suburb of mm -hmm. uh, Richmond. And then you have, uh, we're going to meet your yes. four-legged friends tonight. Yes. Yeah. Uh, later, uh, our friend Dave will uh, introduce you to our Great Dane India and our Black Lab Blackie. Yeah. We uh, we try to travel with our our little four-legged companions as mm -hmm. much as possible. Uh, just like us, we like our adventures, and, and this mm -hmm. is a, a great adventure for us. We like to uh, take our friends for an adventure with us. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand you're leaving in a few minutes. Yes, uh, my wife and I will be going to Los Angeles to uh, start a two-week remote viewing training with uh, Major Ed Dames. Ed Dames, yeah. And uh, two weeks you're going to be there? Yes. Um, we started out doing, we, we initially decided we were going to do his 101 class, which mm -hmm. was a basic introduction and learning how to do it. And the more we thought about it, and our, our schedule kind of worked out to where we could have two weeks off, so we decided to do both of these both classes, weeks. 101 and mm -hmm. 102 classes. Yeah, so, so uh, oh, going ahead in time a little bit, um, how, well, let's go backwards for a minute here. What made you decide to take a remote viewing class? Um, my wife and I have been interested in different phenomena over the years. Mm -hmm. And I have been told by d many different people, very spiritual people, that I have a healing gift. And um, we had listened to uh, Major Dames on the uh, Art Bell Show and became very interested in remote viewing and remote healing. Mm -hmm. um, it was just something that really fascinated us. And we just kind of got interested in it. And uh, it's actually, it's something pretty recent. Uh, we mm -hmm. started, uh, I guess I would say about six to eight months ago is when we got interested in it, as far as mm -hmm. specifically remote viewing or remote healing. And uh, we're here today at the, mm -hmm. at the conference. So now we go ahead. And, oh, excuse me. Pardon? So now uh, let me take your head in time a little okay. bit. What do you think, uh, if at all, do you think it will change your life? Uh, most definitely. Uh, as we go through our path in life, mm -hmm. uh, different things come and go in that path, and, and, and everything will always change. And I think this, for me, will be a great change because I think it will give me a, a better focus in what I need to do in this life mm -hmm. as far as uh, my karma, as far as um, the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. uh, playing my part in the role. Well, that's really commendable, and so we're really glad we went into it. been trying to get to do this interview for three days, but, you know, we have some of, some of the most powerful minds in the universe. Most definitely. And if you just, at the end of the day, you're just bouncing off the wall, and you don't know. <laughs> Did you experience the same thing? Yes. Um, the wonderful thing that I like about this is that you get, you, you're you around a lot of people with the same ideas and the same thought processes, mm -hmm. and that energy does seem to flow throughout the whole conference and throughout the, the, the group. 
Mm -hmm. It's real recognizable. Um, I interviewed uh, Lynn Buchanan not too long ago, uh, and uh, when we did the BK party, that was uh, to refresh uh, everybody's memory. That's the where we bent the spoons and forks and things. And uh, I noticed there was some laying on the floor that were bent, and we both thought at the time that nobody had put their masterpieces back into that pile. Mm -hmm. And so evidently just the energy must have bent quite a few of them because I ran into them as I went back for I noticed that also. Did you? Yes, yeah. I did. I noticed a fork that was actually a spoon that was bent. Mm -hmm. And I was, I had a, that same kind of thought came to my mind. I wonder if, if our energy collectively together as the group mm -hmm bent those also. It would appear so because I asked him and he don't remember putting anybody putting uh, some of the finished product there. We just we were just in the restaurant then I accidentally pulled mine out of my purse and saw the way there. <laughs> and I said uh, the way they kind of looked real strange and I said well that's not yours you know I bought that and he said how did you get like that? And so so we explained it to him and and so he, he gave me a spoon and, and I said, do you take responsibility? And he said, yes, I will. was real thick, you know, one of the silverware here. And I just kind of looked at it a couple of seconds and handed it back to him. <laughs> it was all yes, that so was, on command. We that was a that. very, very interesting thing. Actually, that's probably the first time I've ever had an experience mm -hmm. in that in PK. And, uh, it was just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. It was amazing what, if you ask the universe to do something for It'll you. It'll do it. It yeah. will do it for you. Yeah. And so we worry, sometimes we worry about small things like traffic and different things. And you find yourself, you change, uh, you change times? Um, one thing that I, I've really come to understand about myself and collectively is that I, I tend to focus more on the mundane things in life that I've been doing and I can see that I've got to switch that over to the spiritual side of my life mm -hmm. because in doing so the little mundane things I think will take care of themselves mm -hmm. so switching my focus to the different types of things yeah now lots of times when we have deadlines and we run around in circles sometimes so we'll just say well I need more time mm -hmm. and there it is that's true yeah. That's very true. I, uh, I do computer programming, so yes, I do run into a lot of, mm -hmm. of uh, time limitations. And interestingly enough, um, somehow or another, it always does seem to come together. It works, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. Well, so I hope you have a wonderful life uh, after uh, remote viewing. And... Um, Maybe we'll run into each other again and uh, I think so. stay in touch. And uh, uh, if you run into anything interesting, just email it to us and we'll sure share will. it with the friends. You have a safe journey. Thank you. You okay. too. Bye. Yeah, I'm just thinking it and here we go. Now, um, for the friends that's not familiar with the cropper, that's the RV that I drive. And it has crop circle painted all over. And just to remind you, a few years ago, we did a food drive with this, where we collected a lot of food for the food banks. And when I was in uh, Greenville, Illinois, some of the friends uh, gave me a lot of clothes and shoes to take to the Navajo Reservation. Well, well, the cropper is back on the road. Um, I had some problems with it. So if you see me uptown, uh, feel free to stop by. So if you have any drop-off things for any of those agencies, you let me know. And while we add it, then, um, then um, I will show you how to bend spoons and things like that. So feel free to stop me. And uh, what you saw behind me here a little while ago, that was the car that we drove to the conference uh, with the sign that uh, Doug made reference to because I didn't, I didn't take the, uh, the crop at this time. I only had 32 days available to um, cover 4,000 miles. And so uh, so when you see us with these signs, uh, like I said, feel free to stop us. Now, one of the other people that you're going to hear about quite a bit, um, actually a lot, um, is Ingo, Ingo uh, Swan. 
And so I thought what I was going to do, instead of me trying to explain who this person is, this is Alien Agenda, the book that I recommended to you a while back. It's written, written by Jim Mars. And um, so I thought I would read in here what it says about Ingo uh, Swan in his book, and then I'll go to a second one in a minute. Now, I don't have my reading glasses, so I'm going to muddle through this, okay? Here it says, father of remote viewing. He's a New York artist and scientific researcher. Uh, Ingo Swan is credited with helping to develop the laboratory methods used in the psychic phenomenon called remote viewing. During the 1970s and 80s, Swan's methods were successfully used by military intelligence officers within the Army's Intelligence and Security Command to gather information on the Soviet Union. And there's a picture of him. I got my finger on it over here. And another gentleman that is being made reference to is Mel Riley. And so you get an idea what they look like, OK? Now, then I'm going to um, another book here that will give you another explanation of who Ingo Swan is. And that is taken from a book, uh, Starfire, uh, that you can find in the sci-fi section at your library. And uh, this one is called Starfire by Ingo Swan. And it's an old book, probably out of print. And the publisher says the following about him. It says about the author. Ingo Swan is America's most researched super psychic, a fine artist and a gifted writer. His credentials are unique. He is a cosmic psychonaut who probably has a better grasp on parapsychology than most professional researchers. And that is according to the search for Superman. A sensitive who has caused temperature changes in remote targets by pure force of will, and who used out-of-body astral projection to correctly predict the major scientific surprise of the Mariner 10 Mercury probe. His powers have been irrefutably demonstrated at the prestigious Stanford Research Institute, or short SRI. We'll make reference to that quite often. And he's also the author of to kiss the earth goodbye. And um, of course, all the home pages from all the people we're talking about can be accessed from my web page, which is listed on the bottom of your screen there. So now I'm going to set up for the next clip here. Uh, the next gentleman, his name is Paul, and he was taking care of the book table for Ingo. And um, I wore some Moroccan sandals that Paul found very fascinating. And so we got to talking, and uh, he was very busy. So he asked, would I and Monica Ryan help him sell Ingo's books? And so we said, OK. Uh, but I wasn't allowed to sell my own book at that time. So Jim Mars came over, and he said, that's OK, and sold my books at his table. So the next gentleman uh, we're going to talk to, his name is Paul. And um, we were there tending Ingo's table with all the books. So um, that's where we go next. Father's Day. That's right. There I am with my daughter Carla. Kiana is her middle name. And we're in Australia together at a koala farm. So there she's holding a baby koala and I'm standing next to her. And when she gave me this for my birthday about three years ago, she said, Dad, here is something that you can take wherever you go. Loud. Gotta speak loud. Okay, you gotta speak loud. It says, Dad, here is something that you can take wherever you go to write about your wonderful adventures. Thank you for traveling with me in this lifetime experience. I love you, Carla. And that was her happy birthday gift to me. Oh, cool. She's my daughter. We're definitely kindred souls. So we came to this conference here and ended up uh, ended up spending almost a weekend together. That's right, we did. Say, wasn't it? Awesome. It's delightful. Yeah. We found each other. We did, yeah. So how, uh, how did you end up here? Oh. How did I end up here? I was invited here by a friend of Ingo Swan's mm -hmm. who told me about the conference. And the fact that Ingo was coming was the principal reason why I came. Oh, you came. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been interested in coming to these conferences, but I, I just didn't feel the timing was right or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Ingo was coming in this particular 
the state of everything, I went, okay, and the doors opened. So the doors opened and I came. Wonderful, yeah. So, and you live in Los Angeles? Yes, I live in a suburb of Los Angeles up in the mountains, about three blocks from Angeles Forest. Oh, how cool. As I walk in the mountains with my dog, my German mm -hmm. Shepherd, in the mornings and uh, refresh myself. And it's my sacred space. So, so are you really interested in remote viewing per se, or is this just a bonus? Actually, you know, remote viewing to me is, is one part of opening up the channels of information and accessing. I shouldn't say opening, I should say accessing. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, for me, remote viewing is one part of it. Mm -hmm. And there's so many other things that we're sensing. It's just a way of... I don't know how to describe it. It's just one way of accessing the information. I'm not interested in doing it other than it's a integral part of my life. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of these people that so, find us. So really what it is is that I'm an electronic engineer, and how I create my products is actually not that far off from the protocols of remote viewing. So, for example, I will visualize and go with my product, and I see my product, I hear my product, I can travel into the circuit boards, I can lay out the circuit board design, I can lay out the chassis, I'm inside the transformers, and so on. And actually, so the whole thing is long before I ever put it down into my computer and use my CAD programs to, as the output. So the input is in the spirit, the output comes out in the physical form. You're going to have to take a break here because... Okay. The talking? Yeah, I think because we got to make some money. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we made quite a bit of money uh, at that time uh, because all the books that were for sale, um, they were all out of print, and so of course we had a rush on. We, we had a rush on the book, and um, now the next lady I'm going to introduce you to. Her name is Tamara Temple. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, th that was really very lucky of me to do that because if you remember a few years ago we did some shows on uh, the fully informed jury association where we had um, uh, where we explained to people that's on the jury about all the rights that they have and we had been putting out that we was looking for someone to transcribe these for us um, in in paper form for those of the friends that don't have computers and VCRs and it turned out, Tamara, that's what she did for a living. She transcribes uh, scripts, and she was nice enough to offer to go ahead and transcribe the feature shows. And so I just wanted to remind you that that is going to be available. Now, I'm going to set up for the next clip, if you don't mind. And I'm still bending right along here. It just gets to be real natural. Her name is Tamara Temple, and she's from Louisiana. So let's see what she has to say here. Then to a lady named Tamara. Tamara, yeah. And we got to talking, and you told me you came from where? New Iberia, Louisiana. You, you need to speak up a little New bit. New Iberia, Louisiana. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And it, you came to the conference uh, for what reason? Do you know? Well, yeah, I've been doing something like remote viewing, but I hadn't heard of it, and they're training in it. Mm -hmm. And a friend from the, he's in the Air Force. So since the war, mm -hmm. you know, I've been talking to him mm -hmm. a lot, and he told me about it, and so go over and see what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So it's been wonderful. I understand you uh, found a dog. Oh, that was so great. Yeah. yeah. I found a little puppy on the way over. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take it home with you? I am. I, dri I had driven down. Just, I, just without a thought of it, I thought, I want to hear the ocean. So I saw a sign 20 miles to the ocean, and I went down. And as I got down there, maybe I was there a couple hours, somebody came by and dumped a little lab puppy. Oh, my. So she ran up to me and said, I want to go with you. So she's here, too. She's here, too. Isn't it amazing how the synchronicity of life she might turn out to be one of the best friends you'll ever have? Well, it was right away like that. Mm -hmm. The other freaky thing, uh, if we can call it that, turns out you have a friend that's from Olympia, actually. You, I know somebody who lives up there. Lives up yeah. there, yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's it, it, I'm from Seattle. I have a few friends up there. Yeah. 
Oh, you are, you are originally from Seattle? No, I went up last year. I'd never been in the area. I went to Portland and Seattle. Mm -hmm. Met some wonderful people. I didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stay on a, a, in Ashland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. There was a monastery up on the mountain, Mount Ashland. We actually have some friends that are thinking of moving to Ashland. I didn't know they had a monastery. Up on Ashland Mountain, there's a Buddhist monastery. You drive way up, and at 6, six or 6.30 in the morning mm -hmm. is a, a service. I guess not too many people drive up the snowy mountain at 6 in the morning, mm -hmm. but I did. I loved it. So that's there. And so, so tell me, what do you do at home? Uh, well, I have a, a little, little cottage in the country. And it's um, it's a, it's near. We have in this country one of the a very very old Buddha statue, 900 years old, mm -hmm. made in China for a Tibetan sect. And really, no one knows about it. Very few people know it's there. And when I found it, it was the friend from Olympia who told me about it. And I drove over and saw and and so I have a little temple to Tara is, is called the mother, she's the female Buddha, the mother mm -hmm. of all Buddhas. So I have a little place that's devoted to her there near that Buddha statue because all the people are Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no Buddhists near this relic that we have. So I um, tend the garden, make my food, mm -hmm. um, do, do the devotions to Tara. And the, you know, so it's a little temple there I live in. So all in all, it's been a good weekend for you. Ah, it's been so great. Good the hotel's enough. beautiful. The people yeah. are great. And, uh, so I understand you want to get on the road? Soon yeah. you know. It's a long drive. Long drive. About nine hours home. Yeah. Yeah. And so hopefully when you come to our area, you come visit. And, uh, I might not leave when I go there. <laughs> well, we find a spot for you, you know. So maybe we will uh, uh, talk to you in the studio one day. And thanks for having shared time and space with me. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah, she was actually, uh, uh, she still has a dog. I just talked to her for a few days ago. And um, the Double Tree Inn in Austin was really wonderful. Uh, she had told a story to somebody at the desk there, and uh, they let the dog come into the rest, uh, into not the restaurant, into the hotel, and they were really kind of uh, nice about the little friend that she had found. And and like I was telling you here, back to my fork. After you get used to it, it just almost effortless. It just goes ever which way. Um, the opening shot was a photograph that I took off the door of a restaurant in Roswell, um, New Mexico, that we're going to go to in a few weeks. And I was so impressed with it because it let us know that they did not discriminate. Um, we had, um, it, it said, smokers and non-smokers are welcome, and I really, really like that. And that's why I chose it as an opening shot today, because a lot of the people at the conference smoked. And one of the reasons we do that is because when you, um, sometimes we leave our body and sometimes we are just not grounded. And uh, like in early America and a lot of Native Americans, they smoke either for ceremony or for other reasons. And, and same as it was in early America, so it is in modern America too. Some of us use tobacco to ground ourselves. And um, so some kind of way, when you go anywhere, if you really want to know who's who, just step out of the back door, and um, you'll find that you meet some of the most wonderful people there, uh, including some of our speakers that you're going to meet uh, next week. And so I'm going to show you a little clip of some of the smokers that I ran into. Um, at the uh, Double Tree Inn uh, in, in Austin, and just nice people. And so that's what we're going to set up for. And uh, you'd be surprised who you find smoking these days. Yeah. Well, they have to. There you are. We had a strange conversation here, and the I got a little out of focus. The man <laughs> who had a lot to say about penetration. Penetration. Yeah, that's and I'm going to give mean. him money, too. <laughs> yeah, and he had a. That's right. Thank you. So much. I got the penetration from her, though. She didn't get it from me. I just want that to be on record. <laughs>
but you know the way things are going gets almost like it is these days you know you never know never know okay, okay. thank you so i'm assuming you're having a really good time this weekend. Uh, it's right behind you there so thank you Nick. you're welcome see you come to me is this an Oh, it's like a book on the market. It's by Simon Hines, PhD. And I watch this if I go this way. Voila, there he is. So hopefully we'll get an interview uh, later on, on your book. And you, I ran into you somewhere. And, and who are you? My name is Joni. Hi, Joni. Hello. Yeah, and you came from where? I'm from Boston. Boston? Yeah. He's telling me about her crop circle experience. She has. Wonderful. Yes. So many people have, you know, from all over the place, and we, each one of us experiences it a little differently. A little differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you like to hear my story? Oh, well, yeah, actually I would, but um, I'm going to ask you to come and do an interview in the back room there. Oh, okay. So, that's a good okay. story. It should be recorded. Okay, yes. Yeah. Is there anything more about that? You saw Mr. Swan's book. Take a good look at it. They are print. And now you see him. Yes. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> And now you don't. And maybe I'll show you this one again because I so resonate this one here. Easy go, easy go. Yeah. Hello, this one. I think it's easy go. Hold on. You know, you meet the neatest people when we smoke. I always tell my viewers, you know, <coughs> I'll try it sometimes. Just talk to them and find out who they are. Yeah. I, I'm going to come close. I can hear you here. Just a minute here. <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> what you say, dear? Look natural. Look natural. Oh, look natural, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that would be legal, okay? So I'll just have to say like I am. Oh, I know you like to look natural. <laughs> and you came from all the way from Salt Lake, huh? Salt Lake City. Utah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have um, prior knowledge of remote yes. or you just three came? Three years ago, Dr. I don't, Simeon I don't know Hine, if I can hear you. Well, three years ago, Dr. Simeon Hine came to Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. He trained a group of us in Salt Lake City. Okay. Yeah, so he just came in. The sea of New Mexico, Las Cruces. New Mexico, yes. <laughs> My sister state. Is, is this your first visit to a, a remote, remote, remote <laughs> room from? No, uh, no. 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 Yeah, I was with the military unit. So, yes. yeah. You know, I think there's some most of the some of the most brilliant minds in there. The reason I talk funny, I listened to the talk and something really scrambled my brain. I had to leave. <laughs> Yeah, so you have an excuse, I don't. Something interfered with me, yeah. So, so I'm talking backwards here. Nice meeting you. Nice Thank meeting you. Yeah, she's from... You came through the right from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Massachusetts. She's actually Boston. So Boston, Boston yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a full interview with her, so you'll get to meet her, uh, John Sullivan, here in just a little while. Cool. I'm going to take a break and smoke some good. <laughs> ah... This is a show about psychics, not magicians. So therefore, but that was kind of fun there for a minute. Um, speaking of fun, uh, let's, let me go and uh, tell you a story first. What we was making reference to, um, it, when I was in one of the, um, one of the talks, uh, as, as most of you know, I'm a sensitive. What that means is I pick up things from other people and sometimes illnesses and, pain and pains and things like that. And Inga was given his talk, and I was sort of in direct line with where he was. And um, somewhere along the line, um, and that will be discussed in next week's show, uh, something happened, and I sort of got hung up in the middle of something, some almost like an electronic type attack. And as a result of that, I could not stay for the second half of the talk. Now, what was so interesting about it, I didn't think too much of it other than it had clogged up my ears and I got very disoriented and um, I couldn't think so much. And then what happened was um, a couple of days later, um, now, 
we are back on the road and it's uh, 100 plus degrees most of the way. And it, I noticed that I had burns under my eyes. Uh, I thought it might be sunburns, but it was really unusual simply because my glasses, they made out of plastic and any kind of heat would have melted the plastic. And, uh, but I looked like a raccoon and I thought, well, how odd that I have these burns of some kind under my eyes. Well, it wasn't until the end of the journey uh, when I met up with a lady in St. Louis that was present at the um, conference there, and she made comment about, she thought she had been allergic to something at the hotel, and so I asked her what she meant by that, and it turned out that she had identical burns under her eyes. So that sort of made us think that maybe uh, something out of the ordinary happened there and it caused burns in some of our faces. And so uh, eventually you'll hear about that again. So I just wanted to explain that to you. Um, so you know what we're talking about. Now next thing we're going to will be um, uh, Jim Mars. We're gonna have a few minutes of fun with Jim Mars uh, since he's one of your favorite. Of course, he was there too. So we're going to uh, share some fun with, with Jim Mars to see what, what do we know these days. So if we can go to that. And uh, he had a booth there. The opportunity to come and talk to y'all. And I want y'all to relax. I'm, I can't tell you how, what a pleasure this is. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody's had a nice meal. Everybody, nobody's dressed up. I don't see any neckties. This is great. And this is the way I like to operate. And so we're going to have a good time here. This is not going to be some droll speech, I guarantee you. But uh, we, we'll roll on. If anybody has uh, questions, we'll, we'll get to those too. But uh, right now, pull out your pencil paper, number from 1 to 10. We're going to have a pop test. Uh, anybody, how long did the Hundred Years' War last? <laughs> Actually, it lasted 116 years, <laughs> from 1337 to 1453. Which, which country makes Panama hats? <laughs> China. He gets the gold star, yeah. Ecuador. <laughs> Where do you get cat gut? <laughs> From sheep and horses. Yeah. Uh, what was King George the uh, sixth first name? Albert. <laughs> His first name was Albert. When he came to the throne in 1936, he respected the wish of Queen Victoria that no future king should ever be called Albert. So he changed his name to George. What color is the purple finch? Distinctively crimson. And finally, how long did the Thirty Years' War last? Come on. Anybody? Huh? You got it. <laughs> well, it took a chance. All right, the purpose of that was to tell us that a lot of what we think we know, we don't know. Yeah, and there you have it. So uh, what we think we know, we don't know, and that's sort of where we're going with the uh, with this whole show to show that there is really more than one reality. Uh, now the next clip I'm going to go to, um, I'm not going to have any audio on that because I like to explain to you very briefly who everything is and what you can expect when you go to something like that. And uh, even though it's very serious, um, you know, that's why I shared Jim Moss with you. We had a lot of fun and a lot of laughter. And sometimes you end up in a situation where you can actually um, have fun with people that, that, you, that you don't know. So whenever we get ready, I'll just talk you right to the conference there. And then as we were there, um, it, there was an East Indian wedding. That was really exciting too. And this, is, uh, this was Dr. Uh, Simeon Hines. Um, he wrote a book on crop circles, and uh, next week we're going to have a detailed interview um, uh, with him. He had a table there, and then these were Ingo's out-of-print books that um, that we sold because his distributor went bankrupt or something. So they had driven all the way to, I think it was Wisconsin, to pick up all the books. And then um, Hemisync, uh, the Monroe Institute, had a... And this is a lady's chest. Uh, she had, had this beautiful, beautiful piece of jewelry. And then there's Lynn Buchanan and 
um, Mr. Uh, Jack Kovacs. You'll see them next week. Um, then these are the smokers that you just met, and um, we were out there and um, had a good time. This lecture hall was full to capacity at all time. Then you had vendors that sold um, their goods, candles, and this gentleman is a researcher from, uh, from Japan. And here again, all these people can be accessed to my webpage, which is on the bottom of your screen there. Um, this is Jim, was Jim Master's booth, and there's my book. And uh, people were real busy. So when you go to something like that, um, also think about buying books and things, because usually the original uh, um, author will be there. He'll be more than happy uh, to sign books for you in network and uh, exchange phone numbers. and. Um, it, that's Monica Ryan Smith. Uh, she is the one that drove me all over the country. And here again, and Mr. Kovacs that you will meet next uh, year, and uh, not next year, next week. And uh, she's the keynote, one of the speakers. And that's the lady's chest. Now you can see the whole lady there. But she had this wonderful thing, these wonderful things on her shirt. And so basically. Um, uh, for three days, that's what we did, and they fed us lunch, and we had really nice conversations with people. And uh, uh, again, this was at the DoubleTree Inn in Austin, Texas, and uh, we just had a, we just really, really had a good time. And uh, sometimes you can get coupons off the internet for some of these hotels and stay for half price, and we found that uh, very helpful also. So. Uh, sometimes uh, trips like that can be rather affordable, you know, if you if you network and we can tell you um, how you can work around some of the enormous costs, uh, a trip across country costs to go um, to a function of this nature or then maybe, maybe, maybe something else. And uh, I'm still bending spoons here while I'm explaining this to you. Uh, some of us met in the evening and had dinner together, and like we said, we shared a lot of information and phone numbers, and uh, more and more people are learning how to do things. Um, penetration, this book I've recommended to you before, um, that's where Ingle tells when he remotely went to the other side of the moon. These are the original people that put all the government spy programs into um, into place, uh, Mel Riley, and then this is the young man, Doug, and his wife that we had interviewed, and you've already met Paul, and talking about his daughter and Ingo Swan in the back there, uh, signing books. And um, it, it was just a real, really nice gathering. And from what I understand, there are at least two or three uh, conferences of this nature um, throughout the year. This is the lobby at the Double Tree Inn, and they were nice enough to let us use that. Here comes Miss Monica, and then we gathered in the courtyard again to, for smoking. It was just a really, really nice visit, and um, we had a very, very good time. And so, if that's in your reality, then maybe you could um, just go ahead and and go to one of those conferences if you can find one. Now, let's, how are we doing with our spoons here? Now, if you remember, I opened this at the very beginning. I've been working on this one, and I don't know if you can see this, but this one was just laying on the table, and it's just sort of uh, getting real bent all by itself. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, and so here we go. We can go here and here. Now, in the next show, uh, which will be next week, you're going to meet a lot of the speakers themselves. Uh, one of the things people ask, is it very costly to take these courses? Well, that sort of depends, because uh, some is for advanced training and some is not. I would say they range from 1000 to $10,000. And then uh, next week, when we talk to the speakers, they will explain to you that uh, it's not a weekend thing. You can't just say, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that now and uh, assume that you are a remote viewer. So when you 
when you make it a conscious decision to do something like that, uh, I like for you to know that it, this is a lifetime commitment. And uh, not all remote viewers are psychic because some of the protocol is very sterile and it, it's in a, in a controlled environment. Now, controlled CRV does not mean that everything they do is controlled. It gives the viewer the control over what it is that he is doing. And to refresh your memory, um, last week you listened to the history of um, CRV. And um, for those of you that like to see that again, I'd be more than happy uh, to re-air this. And so here we can just go on and on and, and, do this, and do this all day. Now, if you leave them laying there long enough, and please do not carry these on the airplane. Uh, we tried that because we had a whole bag of bent spoons. And we were told that um, t they were not identifiable right now, so we couldn't bring them. And they will certainly stop you because uh, and ask you what's in your purse. And then you say, well, these are my forks. And then, of course, they're not going to look like forks. And uh, they will stop you at the airplane. So that has happened to some of us. And then when you empower your children to do this, then there comes a time you can, you can put them right back to where you had them. Uh, the other thing that happened on the trip was that some of us did not meet in Austin. We went on to the Navajo Reservation and Canyon de Shade that I'm going to share with you in a few weeks. Uh, we went on a, we're going to take you on a visual tour of Roswell, uh, New Mexico. But some of us end, always end up in Pocahontas, Illinois, and I've talked about that place before. And um, a friend of mine, she was our net worker from Lansing, Michigan, the lady that imports the show in the Lansing. Her name is Michelle, and uh, she came to meet us there. And um, we thought it would be really great to shine our light uh, so to speak, from the middle of the country, and the hotel was up for sale. And so she bought the hotel, and it is called the, uh, uh, the Lighthouse Lodge. So if anybody's in the area, uh, stop by, and um, chances are you will run into some of the friends that um, that often on stay there. It's uh, on exit 36 in um, on I-70, and it's like nine miles from Greenville, and the little town that I that I have shared with you. So, we have quite a variety of people that are interested in remote viewing. And on a personal note, I like to say that uh, it, it it's probably not for everybody, and. Um, it, it just takes a lot out of you. And we made a lot of reference to being tired. It was very intense just to be in the energy to have people of that caliber and um, those mental capabilities uh, and spend the weekend with them, per se. And so it's just really, really kind of hard. And sometimes we wonder how, um, why people chose this. Uh, this path, and so and so. I want to, uh, be, before I run out of time, I want to tell you. My intent was to do an interview with Ingo Swan himself because that was his last appearance, and um, but then when I got there, um, he, he's just a, a very delightful person, and there were reporters there from from Italy. Two ladies they followed him into the bathroom, uh, trying to get. A, trying to get an interview with him, and I had chosen not to. Um, and because what he does sort of speaks for itself, there are a lot of books available that either feature him or talk about him. And um, I just thought that I did not want to go get the interview. But I did ask him one thing. Um, I asked him that, and I said, uh, Mr. Swan, um, have you ever regretted choosing this path? And um, and he kind of gave me, he has a certain look. He gave me that look, and he said, what made you think I would do that? So in other words, he's just like some of us that just follow our path. And and um, if you go to my webpage, 
his home page is on there. He is the most beautiful artist. Uh, his art is just incredible. It is now only being shown privately from what I understand. And if I'm wrong, someone call and correct me. He is just a very gentle, wonderful being. And for the friends that get real upset at the grocery store when sometimes things don't go right, you know, I thought about that the other day. The people, they look just like everyone else. And sometimes when we get upset, we never know who we're going to run into or who we're going to talk to. So I would think it would be real nice or even advisable to treat our fellow man the way we want to be treated because we just don't know um, who's out there and who is going to um, uh, share time and space with us. Uh, in preparing this show, uh, now I'm going to close with that, in preparing, uh, uh, in putting this whole thing together here for you, um, Beth Quist, she's the young woman that did a couple of shows with us. She's currently touring with Bobby McFerrin, and she had been in the studio a couple of times, and uh, um, as I was trying to see how one to close the show, um, I heard her voice in my head several times, and I thought that was kind of strange. And, and then I realized that I had a song um, that she did. It's called Monsters. And, but I had never shared that with you because we had run out of time or something. And um, what she's singing about is uh, the monsters that she created as a child. Uh, because she was somewhat in doubt about the people around her, and it's a beautiful song. And uh, so I'm going to close with Beth Quist today. And um, kind of, <laughs> here's a thought, you know, some of the, some people like psychics and other people, maybe we had monsters in the closet too, and that's why, why we got to be so in tune. And um, so I do hope that next week you'll, Come and join us again, and uh, just to remind you that summer is almost over, and we're going to have a whole, a whole uh, line of on the road shows for you, um, because I brought back 26 hours of, of footage from the trip that I took in the year 2002. And uh, so next month we go to Roswell and Canon de Shea and places. Keep the phone calls calling. Please remember, I don't like to be called before 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. I don't know how we are for time, but you see, the fork is pretty straight again here. And now we're going to go the other way. And uh, it's, it's really fun once you get the hang of it. And, um, oh. But fear sometimes is a good We thing. see you next week. Bye bye. Be a protector.
the glimmering light of my forest Sing angels from a circle of fire Four winds feed their flames My protector, my power, my